Joining us now at the OctaGov Identity Summit is Shane Barney, CISO of USCIS. Shane, th thanks so much for joining us today. What are your biggest challenges that government agencies still face in moving towards more modern and centralized identity management capabilities? Well, I think it's a multi, there's a, there's a number of issues that are, that are in play. So the first and foremost I've seen, and it, it, it was the same for us in our journey and the same for a lot of agencies, is, is sort of outdated technologies and also you know, current technologies that are sort of running around in your enterprise. I mean, you, you've heard us all joke about having mainframes. Well, they really do have mainframes. And, you know, we really still are trying to still find cobalt, you know, programmers, um, which are really, really hard to find. Uh, you know, so we really have these, these really old technology, and then we have these very modern cloud-based systems where obviously they, they you know, really easy to do really modern identity security and role-based access controls and all these great, wonderful things, but then, of course, you have these laggers, and some of these laggers are significant aspects of your mission overall, so pulling those older technologies forward into the modern age is, is a big challenge. So, you know, this is not just about the identity journey, it's really about a modernization journey. Um, and, and it's a forced modernization march uh, because if you know you're really trying to do the zero trust, you're really trying to get there. Um, you know you're going to have to pull all of your stuff with you at the same time. So you're you're you know, in the process of trying to modernize your identity solutions at the same time you're trying to modernize these very old, uh, you know, either it's a mainframe or just some old very old technology that you have laying around that you're still leveraging for your mission. And, and you got to do that without losing sight of the mission. You know, so that's that's the big first challenge for a lot of organizations. Uh, you know, obviously, this isn't cheap. Uh, funding is, is a significant challenge for a lot of organizations. Um, I've seen a number of different polls asking organizations about what that what that looks like for them. You know, how what the percentage of your overall IT budget that have to be dedicated to that. You know, the range it ranges anywhere from a low of like eight or nine percent to as high as twelve percent of their overall IT budget. It's probably not too far off. Um, and and for for an organization, even USCIS, which spends a lot of money on IT. For us to take 10% of our overall budget or even 8% of our overall budget and then just do identity for it, you know, that's, that, that means that something on the mission side has to give to do that. So balancing the priorities of mission and, and the needs of doing a more modern approach to identity are also really challenging. And I think the, the final piece is a lot of organizations that I've spoken to, and I've spent a lot of time talking to organizations about this, is it's just not quite, quite sure where to start. A lot of the, the guidance that we see out there right now kind of, you know, they give you the pillars, they tell you all this really cool high level stuff and they talk about it at a very high level. But what they don't really tell you is the very tactical level. Like, where do I start with this whole thing? This is, this is a huge, huge effort to undertake. Uh, it's a fundamental mind shift in how you do, how you do things. Where do I start? So it, it's those three big ones that I see across the agencies. And, and there are always varying levels of that no matter where you go. Shane, you mentioned modernizing identity. Where has your agency made the biggest gains over the past year in modernizing your identity management capabilities? So USCIS is a little bit of a, we're sort of an outlier. Uh, we started in cloud a long time ago, 10, year, 10 plus years ago now, I think. Um, and at this point, my agency is probably 80, 90% cloud-based. Um, about you know, halfway through that, that, that journey to the cloud, we, we in the security shop recognized that there was that fundamentally we had to change the way we did identity. So about five years ago, we started changing it. We started altering the way we did it. We started impl implementing a lot of these things that would later become known as zero trust. Um, and, and only because we recognized that cloud is fundamentally different from prem. And in, because of that differences, we had to approach it differently. Um, it's not bad different or good different, it's just different. And understanding those differences and leveraging those differences to your advantage, I think, was critical. So, so we started putting in place a lot of these what would become very foundational pieces for zero trust. So over the last year, you know, what we've really been pushing hard into is, is really f getting, not getting control in, in, of all the workflows for role-based access and how we manage our users in and out. Um, because having that 100% lock on your identity um, is the most incredible thing you can do as an agency and organization because you've, you've got to have that. Um, and, and then for really the next big focus for us is moving that identity out beyond users. I mean, there was a heavy focus on users. There tends to be um, some of the models sort of emphasize the user over everything else. But the reality is, is you're applying identity at that level to everything in your enterprise, be it an asset, be it a server, a firewall, a cloud asset, a VDI, it, it's not gonna matter. You're still going to apply that same level of scrutiny that same level, there's going to have to be roles associated, there's your attributes associated with it, and then you're going to monitor all that at a very low transactional level. Um, that's, that's a lot of fun, a lot of challenge.
So as we close out, how are modern cloud-based identity platforms helping to accelerate your agency's efforts to meet the administration's zero trust security mandates? It's a great, it's a great question. Um, I am the biggest advocate for cloud. Uh, I can't say that I always was. There was a while there, because um, I was there through the transition for CIS from we were primarily a prime organization to our cloud where we are today. And, and I understood and I watched all the pain. I was part of the driving force behind moving into the cloud from a security perspective. But it, it took me a while to wrap my head around why that was so critical. Um, honestly, zero trust on-prem, I, I know they say it's possible, it's really not. not. Not in the holistic sense and not in the way that it should and can be done and has to be done. Um, and, and worse, if you're a hybrid organization, you're really, you're really stretched thin trying to balance the two aspects of your enterprise because they're going to fundamentally operate differently. Um, and your security models are going to have to be different. The way you approach them is different. You know, cloud with its API infrastructure, um, the ability to scale it the way it does, um, all that lends itself to, to zero trust. Um, and in fact, without it, I, you really just can't do it. Not, not, in, the, not in the way it's been architected. Um, and so really, you know, for a lot of agencies, getting to cloud is going to be, you know, hurdle one. Um, you know, USCIS is very, very unique in the level of cloud that we operate in. Um, we technically operate in three clouds. Um, not a fan of multi-cloud, but we do. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're pretty far down now and we're very, we're very comfortable where we're at. Not everybody's there yet. And, and I think that step one, they get to the cloud. Um, and, and really begin to understand how you apply your security architecture to that cloud, or your security stack to, the, to your new cloud enterprise. And recognize that in cloud, there is no such thing as perimeter and just get over it. Well, Shane, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.